Hi everyone, this is Gary Wilson, and welcome to tonight's live investor agent webinar. And again, as usual, we have folks on who have been through the Flipping for Profits program and also the uh, re Rental Profits Without the Pain program. So welcome aboard everybody, and almost everybody's been through the investor agent program, even if you went through the other programs. Um, we've got a really good treat tonight. It's something we've been working on. The initial idea actually came up over a year ago. And we've been able to put it together thanks to our web developer, Paul, who's online here. Um, let's see here. Uh, we got a question. Do you f how do you find county's website from another state? This is Grace. Hi, Grace. Uh, uh, Grace, tell you what. Hang on one second. I'll get to that in just a second. Good question. Okay. Um, in any case, so what we're going to do tonight, guys, this is not going to be your usual weekly webinar. Um, this th tonight is specifically devoted to uh, – Introducing to you to the community site, not just telling you about it and what it is and and uh, how it works, but why. And number one, number two is we're actually Paul's going to give you instruction on how to access it and how to actually use it, uh, make use of the features and functions. And then from time to time, I will chime in with uh, suggestions on how you use it in your marketing to attract investors to you. Okay, the right kind of investors the right way. So if you're new to the program, first off, welcome. Okay, um, if you could type in your question box, hello Gary, I'm here. Let me know that you can see the screen. It says members area across it and hear my voice and eventually hear Paul's voice. Okay, um, the way this works, <clears throat> it is live. Uh, you can type in your questions. Uh, that, that helps us prevent having gridlock over the, uh, the audio, although I can unmute you from time to time and I will. I've done that several times in the past. Okay, so those are the basic rules. So another, another thing is that if you notice, these webinars do not follow the outline of the training programs, okay? And that's by design. We used to do that. What was happening was we were never getting out of the, the curriculum. We kept recycling it over and over again. So based on your request over the last year and a half, or actually two years now, we decided to make it open mic, open forum. You tell me what you want to discuss in advance. We discuss that particular subject, we focus on it, we get granular, granular with it, we don't leave until we're all done, and you get to ask all the questions you want, okay, and get answers from me and from others as well. So basically this is a place for you to come to the table with what you've learned in the last week and unveil it and expose it and dig in deeper, and we'll follow up with more Q&A. So that's the, kind of the format. A little bit of a review. Um, we have uh, we have I don't know how many different recording recorded live we recorded webinars out there now again they're audio video that's because of course for webinars but all of the marketing campaigns are out there now okay so if you've got like about 70 different online files you can download to your computer you can watch it on your phone you can strip off the audio all those apps are free okay I suggest if you're new to this you definitely want to go back in your library on the member section and look for the look for those and listen to them and watch them at, at your at will. You can download them and keep them forever, guys. Or you're the, yours to keep forever. Okay. Um, so, in any case, that's uh, rules and regulations. That's a little bit of a review. We've gone through all the marketing. Everything is out there as far as I know. Uh, looking to the future. Um, first off, is next week I will be out of the country and not just up in Canada. I'm actually going to be in Ireland. Um, and because of the phone plans. I'm going to be very, very limited. So for next week, I'm going to consider myself off the grid as far as the phone goes. I will have access to email, though. Um, in an emergency situations, I can use Skype. But uh, for the most part, just call 1-800-931-2605, and you'll get Jody next week. And uh, she can help, uh, help you with whatever typically you need help with. Um, so in any case, uh, for tonight, we're, we are going to dig into the – Investor agent community site, but before I do, uh, Grace had a question. Let me get back to Grace's uh, question here. So hang on a second. Uh, there we are. So how do we find county's website from another state? So Grace, really the, the, the best thing to do is just simply Google the name of that county and then the words property tax assessment. Okay, so you would Google... Um, in LA, for example, LA County property tax assessments, and you'll get a number of uh, 
web or Google results, and you want to look for the one that has a governmental a URL, the name of it is going to be, in other words, it's going to have in there uh, the county first, okay, it'll probably have property assessment, that will have a slash and something like data, and then it'll have usually the, the extension will be the two-digit uh, code for the state. So California would be CA, Florida would be FL, um, Indiana would be uh, IN. Okay, so Grace, what you do is look for the one that's official, that's an actual government name that has that state extension on there, then you know you've got the right website. Um, the other option is uh, we gave you all a, a list of databases you have access to across the U.S. and Canada, okay, and in there you can drill down by state and, and, and province and, and get to the individual counties by there, you, so it's a drop-down menu. So Grace, that was demonstrated back in um, January, I think it was. Actually, we did one in December, one in January. Uh, if you're not sure about that, just look on your look on your, uh, your um, student platform, and all that will be out there. But even even aside from that, just Google it, and you'll find it. Just look for the one that has an actual government name, and that's the official site. Okay. So good question. All right, let me see. There were a couple others I saw pop in here. So before we go to Paul, let's look at that. Um, okay, everybody's uh, logging in. Okay, the, the counties in our area do not supply the majority of the information you're able to get last week. Is there another source for it? Uh, that is Carmen. Hi, Carmen. Um, Carmen, tell you what, shoot me an email. Uh, if, you know, Gary at myinvestmentservices.com, or you can just use my KW one, Gary at uh, uh, Gary Wilson at KW. Let me know what state you're in. And I, this has come up twice in the last week and so far, but I've been able to help out everybody from Ohio and Georgia, okay? Um, and yes, there are additional sites or sites in addition to the county websites that you can get data from, um, and I'll help you with that too, okay? Uh, let's see. Actually, just tell me what state you're in, Carmen, if you want to just type it in there in the text box. Okay, Rhonda says, I love Ireland. Hi, Rhonda. How you doing? Hey, Rhonda, I'll talk to uh, Mark Ricker today. Um, and he's going to have his RIA group beta test this community site we're going to talk about here. Okay, this is Lyle. Lyle says, when do we get information on how to sign in member page? I just got done with module four. So, Lyle, you should be getting that. We do that at the end of every month. Um, actually, Paul, the web developer, is on it. He's the person that can tell you how that's actually done. But if you don't have it yet, you should be getting it uh, by next week, I believe. So, um Let's see, this is, uh, Carmen says, Illinois. Okay, Illinois should be very easy to find. Um, so let me play with that, Carmen, and I will get back to you. Or just, again, or send me a reminder email. In the meantime, I can check out Illinois for you and get back to you with the answer. Okay, Mark Rickard is calling me tomorrow. Excellent, Rhonda. Awesome. Okay, this is Carmen says, Winnebago, Boone, Ogle. Okay. Okay, that's it for the questions, guys. So, so what I want to do, guys, is go ahead and turn this over to Paul. Paul's going to go through uh, feature and functionality for investors and feature and functionality for investor agents. And there's both of you are on this webinar, and the benefit is, is for, for you investors, obviously most agents are not uh, educated, informed, or experienced enough to help you. And that's why we have the investor agent training platform. We actually teach our agents how to work with investors, and we developed it because we're all investors ourselves. So we, we know that it works. Um, in fact, it works very well. So you'll have access to investor agents literally from California to Maine and Montreal to Miami. Okay, uh, You're also going to be able to, e investors, you're going to be able to upload properties for sale Okay, that you have, your own properties. Um, it, initially, it's going to be uh, it's free for investors. By the way, you don't have to pay anything. We give you free access. If you going forward, um, you are going to have to pay to upload your own uh, properties for sale. If you're strictly an investor, okay. Um, and if you don't want to, just um, you can communicate with one of the investor agents, and they'll get it out there, uh, you know, online so everybody, not just in your area but all across the U.S. and Canada will be able to see it. That's the big benefit. Um, you can also, there also be, but for right now, don't worry about that. Right now, you're getting it for free because I 
uh, purposely handpicked you guys. <laughs> so those of you investors are on, uh, we went through our database and I handpicked you. Um, going forward, the RIA groups will be rolled out. Every RIA group in the country is going to be added. Um, first, it's going to be one at a time. It'll be um, Santa Fe, New Mexico, uh, two of the ones, in, uh, one of the ones in Virginia, excuse me, and, and um, uh, let's see, Tidewater, Virginia is going to be up on the peninsula, and the, one of the Pittsburgh sites will be loaded. Eventually, we'll get to Cleveland, uh, Connecticut, and the, one of the Orlando RIA sites. Once we get to that point, we'll roll it out across the board. Okay, for agents, you're going to see how you can use this to build a profile for yourself so that investors who are looking in your area will be able to find you and know that you're a you um, certified investor agent. You also can load your properties up for sale, okay, the ones you have, or if you want to get permission from other people, load their properties, okay. Um, I also suggest, and if you're an investor agent, I suggest you write this down, HUD listings are considered open listings. And what that means is any licensed real estate agent, you have to be a licensed real estate agent, can advertise those HUD properties for sale. You, by Ethically, you should contact the leasing agent to notify them, but you are not required to need, you do not need their permission. These properties are owned by you and me, the taxpayers, and HUD has specifically stated in their bylaws that these are open listings and any agent can advertise them. So if you don't have listings, Advertise the HUD listings, and I'm going to show you how to – I actually showed you how to access them uh, last week, okay? So that's why I did what I did last week. I wanted to prepare you for tonight. Now, what I want to do, Paul, is turn it over to you. So I'm going to go ahead and have you take over, Paul, and just show them. Just start with one group, work your way through, then we'll go to the next group, work your way through. So everybody, please pay attention, and we will uh, – I'm going to stop at the at strategic breaking points to take your questions, okay? Okay. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, hey, real quick. Hey, Cheryl. Um, Cheryl, I want you to talk to um, uh, Rhonda in Redlands, California. She's going to be starting her RIA group, and Mark Rickard is one of our KW guys. He started his own group in Santa Fe. So I'm going to have you start start yours right there in Lynchburg, okay? Um, Lynchburg needs one because you've got a strong investor community. Um, so uh, you're going to be – you'll get the double bonus out of this. Okay, everybody ready? Um, Paul, you ready, buddy? Yep, I'm ready, Gary. Okay, you're on, man. Okay, Gary, uh, the first thing I want to go over is that um, whenever you're logging in, our current silver level membership people will be able to log in automatically from the My Investment Services website area. Now, we've already sent out an um, invite letter to X amount of uh, investors that are beta testing it. So they already know what their log and pass is. Um, your log and pass to get in here is the original log and pass that was issued to you. So if anyone's having an issue with, with getting in, try, please try and refer back to one of the original emails that came out to us that refers to your username and your password for the Silver Level membership area. If you are um, currently watching this and you were a Silver Level member, and you're not a Silver Level member anymore, and you want to have access to the new community site, um, send a message over to Beverly, and Beverly will get with you on getting back in in order to have access to the community site again. Now, to log in, it's just like going to the ship area you usually do. This is the front page of the My Investment Services website. We'll go over here to the members area. I'm going to scroll down here to the enter silver level membership page. You'll see this graphic right up here. There's our community site login here. Whenever you click on here, it's going to take over and automatically log you in. Hey, hey, Paul. Yes. Hey, you're 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 fading just a little bit on the audio. Um, I'm not sure if you're directly over the mic or in front of it, but um, I just want to recap. So to get access to this, the students are going to go to the My Investment Services website first, then go to the member section, second, and log in, and then click on the silver member, the silver level membership button, and then Correct. from there, this is what they'll see from there. 
Is that correct? And that okay, gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All set. Okay. I'm going to log in here. The opening page here has our community map here. We have three categories currently up here, investment opportunities, investor locations, and agent locations. Now, in order to add either to an investor location or an agent location or an investment opportunity, you're going to want to scroll down on the page here. Now, this get automatically gets populated with all the little icons depending on what you are. You can see they, they match up here as to what the icon's for. Here we'll see. I'm going to I'm going to switch over to this other screen here. here. Okay. I'm logged in. Not off paper. Click this one. I'm logged in as you currently. Now down here is where you're going to either add a listing or add yourself as an agent or an investor. So you scroll down, go to add listings and click on this place. So click to add a, to add property to add a property for sale. We're going to click on places on that drop down menu. Correct. That okay. term might change. It still work. Uh, it may not be places, but it will still be one uh, one listing at the, at the moment. Okay. So keep in mind here. Here's where your category is. So here they're going to be posting this as an agent location, investment opportunity, and or an investor location. First thing I'm going to go through, because I already have this preset up loaded, is an investment opportunity. So let me grab. I have another file over here. I'm just dragging and dropping some content that I already have free. I'm going to throw this in here, title listing, which is just a property name. I might take some of this. I'm going to take all of this content over here, which again, if you have if you have information on any other website, whether it be KW site or any other site, all I'm doing is copy and paste or drag and drop and copy and paste from any other website. So I'm adding content here about the listing. So listing description is going to be all the features that you want to put up about the listing. Okay. Now li listing title is this what the viewers are going to see? Once they click on the icon for the property? Correct. Once they have mouse over the icon is on their end or click on it, that's what they're going to see here. You can modify it to your taste. I'm just using an example of, of um, the actual location. Okay. Um, then we come down here to enter a location. Um, I'll put the whole address in. My stage region. Now, if something's not already populated, once once things get going, there's going to be a lot of things populated in here. I'm going to have to change this, but I'm going to change this to And I'm going to hit set address on the map. So it's going to find it and add it to here. This uh, information down here, longitude and latitude, you really don't have to pay attention to that much. Um, most of this stuff, these ones here are optional. This is already pre filled in. Now, you can start putting in your phone number. I'm just going to do dummy stuff in here. Okay. 
Now you can add your email address if you want to be, you know, whatever you want to be contacted by. I'm just going to put anything off, delete this. Uh, if, if you have more information at another website, you can throw a website address in here just by going to the other website. Copy in and pasting it. I'm not going to paste that there. If you have this up on a Facebook page, you can put a Facebook page well, URL too. Well, real quick, Paul. So, that, so for the investor agents, obviously, they all have a website. Matter of fact, some of them, like me, have multiple websites. They would plug in. Mm -hmm. This is for your investor agents. What I would do is I would plug in um, at least your website with the in the page. It allows people to search for properties at a minimum. Right. You know. Um, and for investors who have your website, a lot of you who are wholesaling or flipping, whatever site you have where you're showcasing your properties, you would put your prop, your website there. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Paul. Exactly. It, that's all right. And, and it, if you have a YouTube video up for the property or uh, whatever it may be, you can put that into there. Now I'm gonna go down here, um, drag and draw files to upload. I have a few pre-selected images. Open those up. They're uploading. That's ready to go. You want to click this little uh, please select turn conditions and then go to review your list. Preview of the listing. Everything's doing with that. Then you can publish. That's been submitted. We'll go back out here to the This will take us back out to the home page here, or the main map page of the Western Agent Directory page. Then we'll see if we got a new one added out here. So we just added this one in here whenever I click on it. Like you said, Gary, this is your preview. A little preview image, um, name, telephone number. Now, if I was throwing a website on there, you wouldn't even have to go through like that, uploading your images, um, or at least one image maybe, but your website URL would be here, or YouTube video would be here. Okay. So that's how you go about adding a listing. Uh, you can see that we have, here's an example of an investor, oh, we'll do uh, do age. So here's a, small version of an agent listing and to get over to the agent find more out about them. It works both the same way for investors and for agents. If I want to find out more about this person because they're in a particular location that I'm interested in, then I'm just going to click on the name up here and free some of their uh, information in. We'll go ahead and go over and take a look at the page. Essentially, you put yourself in as an investor and agent on the map the same way primarily the same way you just did for a listing. All three pretty much look work the same way. Okay. So now here's Christie's agent page. All this information is editable here, additional photos. Location map. A lot of times, too, you want to take a look at uh, all the things that go down, on down the uh, side of the page over here because it'll show you most uh, recent activity and different things like that. Now, I'm going to just show you that if I'm new, I just log in. I'm 
going to put myself on the map. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go. Uh, you can see here's a my listings now too that's there. Which since I put that one in as Gary, it's going to start showing uh, my listings in there. I'm going to go to add listings and I'll go to places. Okay, this is if you're brand new, you just logged in for the first time, and you want to add an agent or an investor profile um, to the main map, community map. Then your first thing you can do is select this and do agent location. And you're basically going to follow the same way that we just did a listing. You're going to put in your listing title would be your name, whatever you want to say about yourself in here. Um, keyword tags, you can use this if you want to. It doesn't really matter, but you might want to use... Um, um, maybe add your location in. Um, any other things that you may want some defining by searching, and you're going to put those in. Yeah, like um, like, like the keywords: flips, rentals. Yeah. Yep. Wholesale, property management. Yeah, and, and you're just going to separate those by a comma um, for each one of your keywords. So the more keywords you put in there about yourself, the, the the easier someone's going to be to find you um, for that particular keyword. Down here, you're just going to put in your location, just like we did for the um, investment opportunity location, put in your address there. Everything down here is the same. Put in your phone number, your email, your website if you have it, your Facebook page. Um, here's where you would upload your profile picture, and that profile picture is to be in the back of here. Okay. Then again, you can click that just like we did the last time. And it's going to put you on the map here. So again, here is, I forget who we looked at, it's Christy. So basically, that's her thing. We just looked at how to put yourself on the map as an investor and agent. Is that pretty straightforward here? Yeah, so I, I like so so far so good. The the agents can load profiles of themselves, or they they will load profiles of themselves. They can also load any inventory they have for sale. And again, if if you don't have inventory, guys, just grab the whatever local HUD listings you have in your area, put those up there. Okay. Um, and I've got a a nice surprise for you all at the end of the meeting here. I'm going to sh tell you what Paul and I are working on together. Um, to help put a lot more properties out there uh, that are off the, not on the MLS. So just hang on to your seats. We'll describe that here at the end. I just want to get through the content first because this is more, remember this night's webinar is completely different than all our other webinars. This is, uh, we just happen to be unveiling this uh, community site tonight. So it just happens to be tonight that we're doing this. Um, so Paul, if you could go ahead and, um, now let's switch gears and think investor. Because there's investors on the webinar tonight too, and I want them to see their functionality and what they're doing. And I'll kind of chime in and add in a little bit about the the the, the why um, and how they can participate and what the benefits are for for them too. So, and then do you we'll, want me? Do you want me to move away from the directory at this point, Gary? Oh no! Yeah, keep. Matter of fact, if you keep going with what you've got going on, I just want to make sure we have time um, to show the investors what they what they need to do too. But go ahead. I know you've got this. There's a forum to go over. Um, there's a directory. I mean, there's whatever you had lined up, Paul. Go ahead and stick with that first. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you're from Canada, as you can see, this obviously includes Canada. <laughs> so yeah. We, we try to leave no stone unturned. You know, I haven't taught up in Manitoba, but I've taught in uh, Montreal, Ottawa, and all around Toronto. So, um, even as far out down as London, London, Ontario. Okay, here. With that said, if you're going in as an investor, you're basically setting yourself up the same way that we just set up an agent. I mean, I'm just talking on a technical aspect. Okay. So, as you can see, that here's a, a sample um, investor location right here. Um, you're going to do that the same way that I just went through, as in adding listing places. You're going to change this. Select category, and that will change over to investor location. And you're going to follow suit same way down that you did before. 
Now, with that said, I'm going to back back out of here again, and we'll just take a look at Once you fill that form out, we looked at it three times, that we'll come back to here and click on an agent profile, or investor profile, and we'll click on here. I actually don't have much content in here. This is one of the first things I started uh, monkeying around with that again. But yeah, okay. here's your, uh, your profile. Um, very short description here that, that I just threw in here. So the what the investor would probably be putting in there is you know whatever's going to attract them to an agent. And I, I don't know, maybe you can elaborate on that a little bit more as to how yep. they will use section here there. Yep. Okay, as an investor, I'm putting on my investor hat, and if I had this 20 years ago, man, i tell you what I'd be doing is I would be putting in here all the areas, listing all the areas where I want to invest, and you know, because of the data we have available to us through the, the, our list of websites for research, I know, for example, that um, you know, uh, there's still several parts of Florida like Pensacola, Panama City that are great investment areas, Macon, Georgia, uh, several towns around Salt Lake City, Utah, several several areas in Texas, all around Houston for in particular, and all the usual Rust Belt cities, you know, Detroit, Buffalo, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, um, Midwest, you know, in, in you know, Indianapolis, um, the outlying areas of Chicago, lots of great investment areas. Uh, in the Carolinas, um, around Columbia, uh, all around Charlotte, Greensboro, Raleigh, Durham, uh, and unbelievable investment areas. Um, several areas are in, up in Pennsylvania again. Um, you know, Columbus, Cincinnati. Uh, you know, it depends on where you, you know you can invest everywhere. And people think sometimes, well, my area is too expensive. Like for those of for those of you in California, I know they're more expensive. But the fact is, people still rent there. In fact, 40% of Californians rent. That means 40% of all the all the residential stock is an investor stock. Somebody owns those properties. It might as well be you or your investors. Um, but in any case, I would list all the areas that I'm I'm investing in, and I would list my favorite types of investments. Okay, so for me personally, I would say. I like small multi-unit buildings. I, you know, five five to twenty units is ideal because um, when you when you get up to like fifty units and above, it tends to be very very competitive. Um, and when you, you know, there's a, there's an abundance of properties that are like that. Yeah, I like the the duplexes, three units and four units too. But there's this, you know, you, I learned to buy bigger properties over the years. I guess is what I'm getting to. In any case. I would list the areas I'm investing in. I would list the types of investments I like to look for, and I would put a message out to the world of investor agents saying, "Hey, you know, I'm not opposed to invest outside my area because good investors are not opposed to investing in multiple areas." Um, by the way, for you investor agents, in every area I've been, you've got investors coming in uh, often from other countries, like like Germany, China, uh, Thailand, South Africa, Australia. Spain, um, those are just to name a few. Obviously, Canada. Can I don't consider Canada a foreign country because I live up there part time. <laughs> so, uh, but for use those of U.S. citizens, Canadians like to invest in the states, and Canadians also invest in Canada. Um, in any case, you want if you're an investor, you need to put that type of thing out there so that you have you have more exposure to all those areas where investing is a good business. Okay, and you're basically going to be putting your efforts uh, and expanding them exponentially by doing this. Not to mention the fact that you can also promote your own properties. If you're, if you're flipping a home or you've got a, a wholesale deal, whatever it is you're doing, you can put those out there. And for the time being, you don't have to pay for it, okay? Um, so sorry, Paul. I didn't mean to, to get on run on like that. I just want to make sure the investors knew um, that this is, this is, you know, as much about them as anything else because we've never had this as investors. We, we've always had to go to individual agents and individual locations. Now we can go out there one location, put our profile out there, and get exposure anywhere we want to when it comes to investing. So, 
So back to you, Paul. That's fine. Yep. I'm going to recoup. I'm going to go over this just one more time, real briefly, so that we can move on to some of the other features here. So again, once you're logged in, you're going to want to add yourself to the map as an investor or an agent. After that, you know, putting up investment opportunities. That's basically fair. One of the things that I want to point out is, as you can see, we just put this one in here, and it has a little new icon. So this flows and changes. I mean, it's constantly going to be updated as more people are, are joining, adding their profiles, or adding their, their um, investment opportunities. Now, again, just to uh, go to this again, in order to add yourself as an agent, an investor, or an opportunity, you go to add listings places. The first thing I would do, just to make sure that you're you know, putting it in the right location, is change this select category. The aging location, that's an opportunity for an investor location. Now with that said, Gary, I'm going to bounce around a little bit here because this is where it starts getting a little bit uh, exciting here and you start to see everything come together. I mean, we just looked at one small faction um, of the community site here, and that's with the with the um, community map. Now, basically, what you're getting whenever you log in here is you're you're setting up your own profile as well. You're setting up a profile on the map, but you also set up a profile for yourself. So I just clicked on Gary's image up here for you just logging in and not setting anything up. This would just be blank up here. Well, when you click on that, it's going to take you over to um, your profile page. And you can sort of think of this as uh, it, it's sort of Facebookish um, in, in functionality. So just as in Facebook, um, I have my own, or Gary has his own uh, image up here for a background image. Um, and we have our own, his profile image. So once you log in here and you click up on here, quickest way is just click on that icon and you'll come over to your profile page. This will be blank whenever you first log in. You can change your cover by clicking on here. I'm going to try and zip through these features here a little bit. Change cover page comes over to here. Basically, all you do is select your file or, or drag and drop an image that, that you want to use up here. It could be your Facebook profile or anything. But once you throw it on here, it's going to add it to the background up here. If you can find a wider image, um, it works better. Um, otherwise, it's going to stretch it out uh, continually. So, the wider the better as far as that. Now, as far as updating what you can update on your profile, again, here's your, your profile picture. I'm going to show you a different way to do it here, too. Once you've clicked on profile, that's where I'm at here because you can see that start, and you can change your profile photo. And you're going to do that with the same, same procedure. You're really going to drag or drop your picture on here or click here and it's going to ask you to select your image from your computer. So I could have selected that, I could have selected anything. Now, you can see we have activity, or, uh, profile notifications, messages, friends. This connects everybody, whether you're, in, you're investors or your agents. This is where things start getting uh, pretty cool. Now, you can see over here, we just have Gary in here, and he has one, one friend. I'm not going to need to, I'm going to bounce out right now for the moment. I'm going to go over to members. So if I click on members, and again, I'm logged in as Gary. When I click on the members page, I can see all the other, this isn't all the other members. As soon as you log in, you get added to this members page here. So we can see the most recent people that have been logged into this. Now, as you saw, Gary's account over there had the one friend in it. Here's where you add different people. Just friends, the private message. Now, I'm going to, I have several windows open, and I have Beverly's open here as well. So I'm going to go come over here. I'm going to go to Beverly's profile. Now, you can see. We have her down here, a friend here too. I'm going to move that. Now, here's where you can go over. There's several ways you can connect and make friends 
awkward connections with either investors or agents. This is all members right here right now, so if, you're, if you already know somebody, you can either look them up by doing the search on over here, and what you want to do is make a connection just like you're making a friend on Facebook. So here I'm logged in as Gary. I'm going to add Beverly as Brian. So that request will be sent over here. Do you see this just pop up? This is a live notification. You have one request um, from Gary to become a friend. So whenever you log into your profile page, you want to check your live notifications uh, and or your messages, because this is where the messages that you're actually not online. So you have one friend request. Okay. Hey, hey, Paul. Yes. There's something on your audio. I'm not sure what it is. It's, just, uh, it's better now, but boy, it got really loud. Yeah, I don't know what that noise, that noise is. It uh, comes comes and goes a little bit. All right. How am I signing now, Gary? Well, I can hear you now. Yeah. I'm really not doing anything. I guess it's just uh, just our friend, the Internet. Yeah. Okay. I've seen that happen before. Hey, hey real quick, I can see uh, Carl's added himself. Good job, Carl. Um, one of the things I want to ask Paul is that, because uh, I know this is going to come up and think I'm Matter of fact, I think I'm looking at a question right now. Ah, there it is. Okay, this is from uh, Cheryl, and Cheryl's asking exactly what I was going to ask is, if if we have agents who are on online as investor agents, but they are also investors themselves, I'm guessing they can add a profile as an investor and add a profile as an agent. And I hope if the answer is yes, that's good. Because I would want to do that myself, because I'm an investor and also an investor agent. So is, that, is that true, Paul? We can add profiles, one each for investor and investor agent? Correct. Awesome. Okay. And then we could also add properties. That is excellent news. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we're, again, we're back over here on the, the message page. And if I go back over, what we're doing here is, again, we're, just, we're connecting. Um, Trying to find. Well, give you, give you, while you're doing, I'm going to give you an example of what we're talking about connecting. Um, we we have referrals going back and forth all the time. Some of them we generate ourselves and we send out to our students. But more importantly, uh, students or investor agents are sharing in, you know, referrals back and forth. So in other words, you have an investor from say Toronto who likes to invest in uh, Detroit and Chicago, and all the way down in Orlando, Florida, okay? Um, now, if you're an agent in Detroit, and you are you were that Canadian investor's first contact, and you ask them in the interview process, which you should, hey, where else do you like to invest? Now what you can do is refer them to the other investor agents in the other areas and earn a referral fee from that. And it doesn't cost anything. We, it used to be this was, um, you know, Beverly would just simply share information, and now we can do it automatically online, and you guys can interface, interact, communicate, coordinate. Um, number one. Number two is you can also collaborate amongst yourselves and with investors on investing. You know, if you if you can afford to buy a, dupl a duplex yourself and, you know, let, let's say Carl, I'll, I'll call on you. Carl can afford to buy a four-unit building. And Anne can afford to buy Annie afford to buy a four unit building. Perhaps together they can buy a twelve unit building. Okay, so there's power in numbers, and we've had that happen already several times in the last year. So, so keep thinking not just what Paul's showing you guys, but how you can actually use it in your activities, whether it's marketing to attract investors or investing yourself, or collaborating, getting referrals, collaborating on, on other investor properties amongst yourself. I mean, the, the, the possibilities are endless. And I would literally get out a sheet of paper and start writing down, how can I 
and you know, how can I generate more referrals? How can I get more clients? How can I have more investment opportunities available to me? Um, and you can use this to accomplish all those things. So, in any case, um, uh, Paul, go ahead and keep going with what you're doing there. I'm sorry. Okay, no problem. Okay, I'm going to bounce back over here. And under, um, I was showing you how we were, we were connecting as friends. So, under Beverly, her, once you log into your, you click on your friends, you can see there's a request tab. And once you click on that, then you can see Gary showed up as a request to Beverly. I say accept. Accepted. That makes the connection there. I'm going to move that away. And if I go back over to Gary, you know, I can see now you, there are two friends listed. So once you already have your friends lined up and you want to connect with someone quickly, you can go to your friends tab. And now I can see I can either private message Everly or I can private message me. Um, but we'll just private message me. If I send a quick message over to Paul, then it, again, it's like sending a. Well, now this would be for additional subject as. Testing private message in your message. Then we hit send message. I don't have myself my profile loaded up. That's going to come in, and I would see if I logged into mine, I would see my messages. So, whenever you log into your account in here, you go over to your profile page. You're going to want to check and see if you have any messages, any notifications. If you uh, you see friends. Um, you want to click on there and see if you have any friend requests, anything that came to the groups. As well, I'm going to go back over here to activity. So from your profile page, you can also send out messages to the overall group as well. So this is where you post just like you post on your, your own Facebook page. So Gary, what's new? Uh, anything Tonight's webinar. We'll just leave it at that and post update. Now that went on Gary's page, which if you're friends with somebody, you can come over and see their personal messages, what they've posted. But as well, if you go over to now activity around here a little bit. Activity is like your main feed um, news feed page on Facebook. So you can see here Gary just posted in webinar tonight. But this is also all the activity, everything that's posted, um, whether someone posted up a new property, whether someone joined the group, this is everything that's going on within the community website is going to be posted on this page here. And again, that's your activity page, and think of that as your Facebook main news feed page. Now, from there, I'm going to bounce over to... Let's go and look at forums. Okay. You can probably help me out a little bit here, Gary, because we're just we're just this is in its infancy here as, as we're taking off with this. So currently we have an agents forum and an investor forum. These are ones that I threw in here, uh, and this one I just put in. It's website questions. If you guys, um, if you're stuck on something or you don't know how to do something, you can use this. We'll just take a look at it, it while we're here. So if you're having a problem with the website, like, you know, I don't know, I forget how to, to add a friend, or, or someone keeps telling me they're um, requesting, and I don't know how to accept them as a friend, um, then you would go into here, create a new topic under website questions, and it will be need help, we'll just say with logging in. And we'll submit that. Title. Let's make this simple. Detail. But please be scripted as possible. We'll move 
so now I know that that's been added. I'm going to go back here to forums, and I can see that. Now, this would be something for me. Now, whenever I click in here, I can see that Gary has submitted a new topic into the website questions. And this is something I'll be monitoring. So if you guys need help with something, this is where you want to. No, I did that wrong. So, this, so when people type in when people type in oh. questions that they get answers, that's automatically added to the um, to the facts. Is that right? Or in other words, everybody no. has access. Or? To the FAQ. I'm going to be adding that myself here. And okay. I'm sorry, but once this gets populated, it's more it's easier to figure out exactly what's going on. So, if there were multiple people that posted questions, it would be down here. I just overlooked this here. Um, so. Whenever I log in, I click on there and I would see need help. So then I would click on here. I know that Gary needs help and he needs help logging in. So then I would click a reply here. It would be like whatever it may be. You know, check your email or um, check the email you got yesterday with your username and pass, whatever it may be. And then that's going to be added to this. And this is just going to be like a, oh, well, we, we know what forums are. It's going to archive it. So hopefully when someone else has a problem, and they come here, they can already see, oh, someone's already asked that question. Here is the reply to it, and then it's just the help section. Now, with that said, I'm going to shortcut back to forums, and maybe you can help elaborate, elaborate on this too, Gary, because, you know, mainly what we're looking at is an agent's forum and investor's forum. So, Gary, maybe you can give an example of, you know, what someone as an agent this page is a little bit different, but it's the same yeah. thing. Well, I'll give you a good example. Like right now, the states of Ohio and New York are working on legislation to basically stop wholesaling in those states. Um, so, you know, wholesaling affects everybody because a lot of investors like to do it, and a lot of investor agents are involved in it. I actually know investor agents personally who, who wholesale themselves as a licensee, and there is a way to do that. We actually teach that in a training program. But what I would do is I would post out there, you know, what's the latest news on that legislation? And the reason why everybody should be interested in that is because once a couple of states pass that, it's just a matter of time before it rolls out to the other states. So so current events, particularly when it comes to, to uh, the legal aspects of our business, also um, uh, financing, let's say you – you come across a good lender who does a really good job with your clients' investing needs. Put it out there. Give them some love and, and let the other agents know who the good lenders are. And that was, that would be more geocentric, but that's a good example. Also, you can post out there, you know, the local contractors who are doing a good job, the electricians, the plumbers, the roofers, you know, inspectors, insurance guys. You know, all those all those are uh, uh, resources that our investors need. Okay, and I'm sure our investors on the, on the line here would really appreciate that. I know I I would, because um, that was always a struggle in the beginning until I I basically built up enough relationships. I had enough contractors working for me. I did, it wasn't an issue anymore. Uh, but that's an example of what you can put out there. Um, same thing with in, with investors. You know, don't be afraid to uh, to share. Uh, you know what you're learning, what's working out there, but more importantly. For the investors, you should be putting out there what it is you're looking for. You know, let people know if you just sold a flip and you're looking for another one, or you sold a, a big property and you're doing you're doing a 1031 exchange, for example, and you need to identify a property in 45 days and close in 180 days. You better believe you should be using a site to put the word out, get the message out that you need a you need a property ASAP. Okay, so there's a number of ways you can use that, Paul. Uh, for both investors and investor agents. Um, hey, Paul, listen, it's, it's 7.59. I want to also tell them a little bit about what we have coming down the road. But before I do, there is a good question out here, I, I, and I, know it's, I knew it was going to come up, and I don't know the answer because we haven't even looked into it. Do you know if this, if this uh, provider where we, we got this license, 
do they offer a, an app that people can get on their phone so they can look, use this on their phones also, on their smartphones? Mm, that's a good question. I'm going to have to look into that here. Yeah. I mean, no, no, I know on my phone I can get full functionality. I can go into websites and get the full site with no problem. A lot of people don't have that ability. So if you could take that as a, a takeaway, let us know if there's an app available. And if there's not, I guarantee you it's just a matter of time before they develop one. So mm -hmm. uh, let's see. The other thing too, Paul, are you, how are you doing on your uh, on your agenda? Did you pretty much cover everything you wanted to cover? No, I'll go through this real quick, Gary, because um, we're going to pop over here. So we saw the functionality and how we want to be able to use the forms. Again, it's another way for everybody to communicate back and forth. Now, this is another way for people to communicate back and forth, and this is through the groups area. So we have two groups right now, investor, uh, investors and agents in groups. So let's say you're looking for, let's say, I'm already, we're already joined here, but I'm going to, we're already a member of the investors group. So now, this is an area here as well where if you want to post something directly to an opportunity to uh, an investor or an opportunity to uh, an agent or vice versa, this is just another area where um, you can get to people that are specific for that. So like right for right now, I'm in the um, I'm in the I'm in the agents group. Let's bounce over here. I'm going to go back to groups here. Well, there is members too. So this is another way to... In developing this, I'm still finding out things that are cool about this. Um, I'm going to go back over to investors. This is another way to segregate um, people that are just in investors group too. So I'm going to click on members here. And believe... Yep, that's what I was hoping it would be. So now, if I want to know every, if I want to have a, know who is all in the investor group or the agent group, then I click on the members icon. So this way, if you want, you know, if you want to be a friend with every investor or every agent, um, it's easily you can easily get to them in Adam's friends by going this direction here. Um, that's not the main purpose for groups, but it's an easy to find and segregate people down to. Um, specific areas. So I'm going to go back into um, the investors group. Now again, this is it's a bit like forums, but this is more like cookie stuff here too, where maybe not necessarily adding something into a forum as a question or something, but you just want to throw something out there. Now you can also, um, with with this, if, if you added a new, um, let's say you have a new opportunity that's on your own personal website or whatnot, you could come over, grab it from, you know, copy and paste from someplace else, and you could instantly, um, this is my new listing, and paste the, um, the URL over to your current website, and that's going to get in front of everybody that's in either a investor in the investor group or the agent group. Um, so this is a quickie way to get quickie stuff, just like sort of like your Facebook as well, but you're posting stuff that's directly um, meant for a particular audience, whether you're an investor or an agent, to see and see quickly. And again, if you do that, then if you went over to activity, it's because that's our main news feed of everything that's going on, um, it's going to show up there as well. But you're going to find once you start bouncing around and getting the feeling for how quickly you want to get to somebody or, or quickly get information disseminated out there, where's the best place to post it. Does that make sense, Gary? Yep. Yep. Okay. With that said, we've gone over pretty much all the primary areas of the website. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do is uh, let me check back here for questions again. Hang on one second. Um, okay, we're caught up on questions. All right. The other thing I want to mention to everybody here is, uh, first off, type in questions now if you got them because we're, I'll stay on as long as you guys need us to. Um, but I know a lot of you, have, you know, after the after the hour, you tend to want to move on. I understand that. But if you have questions, type them in. 
and while you're doing that, I want to give you a little bit of a heads up here. Um, so far, the the system is designed to provide the greatest benefit to those who, who use it the most. Okay. Um, one of the things we're going to do to help uh, basically launch you guys into the stratosphere is this. If you look at this map of North America, U.S. and Canada, you'll see there's 50 states and 10 provinces, okay? Um, there's counties in all those states and all those provinces, and all those counties, with very few exceptions, have uh, county property databases. They all do. I think there's only like four to them. And all of that data is available to all of us, okay? Now, we have the basic functionality of being able to, to per, I, I can purchase that data for every county. I've already done it, actually, for one county, and download it, and then uh, import it into this website. Now, right now, I don't want to, I'm not going to make any promises or make any commitments on time frames, but I want to let you know that that's something that we're working on, which is importing all the property files for your counties where all of you guys are, whether you're investors or agents, wherever you are, we're going to purchase your county's data and we're going to import it. It's going to take some time to do it. But what that means is every property is out there, and, and I'm going to, we're going to focus on investor properties, obviously. Um, so what that means is if you're, if you're an investor and you're, you know, your MLS inventory is not providing you what you need, you need to tell your, your local investor agent, and they're going to be able to go to the county tax assessment data on this website. You can look at it too, by the way. You investors can cl click on a list of uh, icon here for, for a property, see what kind of property it is, if it's a fourplex or a threeplex or a duplex or what have you, or a storage facility or a strip mall, whatever the case is, okay? Um, you let your investor agent know what it is you, you want based on what you're seeing because it's all going to be out there. And they will contact the the owners of those properties for you, okay? And get them basically use a certain uh, there's certain uh, techniques and tools we have to locate people and find them and communicate with them because a lot of people own properties they probably would sell if they were able to. They just don't want to. They're busy. They don't they don't really believe that most agents are able to help them because they're not trained like our investor agents. And now we have a way to support them. So what I'm getting at is this. All the data is going to be out there for you, okay? It's your fingertips to access. So don't, so for no more will you be restricted. It's not going to be just a limited supply of properties. You're not going to have access to all the properties everywhere, all right? It's just a matter of time. We're going to start in the order that we started rolling this out in uh, two years ago. We're going to start with the counties where we actually taught the program first and work our way through, and it's going to take a while. We first got to uh, do the first one, but I'm going to keep you posted on that. I just wanted to share that with you. That's not anything we've told anybody yet, but because you guys were uh, took the time to be on here, that's the big surprise we want to give you. It's totally free. You don't have to. I'm paying for it. You don't have to pay for it. You already have access to it because of your membership. Um, so for your agents. Who are wondering, you know, where are all these properties and who owns them? You're not going to have direct access to them, all right? So, in any case, Paul, that's what I wanted to share with them. I know we got a, that that's on the back burner, but uh, you know, perhaps throughout the summer we can work on doing the first import and do a beta test on that, and we'll pick, we'll pick a handful of investors as agents again, and once it's ready, we can go ahead and move forward with it. Um, any questions, guys, on what we just showed you tonight? Let's see. Um, Cheryl says, thanks, Gary. I'll be sure to contact. So, uh, okay, Rhonda, Cheryl, Cheryl Johnson is going to contact you. She's from Lynchburg, Virginia. And uh, if, you, if you don't mind to share a little bit of your insight with her, that would be wonderful. And let me check for other questions. And if not, we will go ahead and call this a wrap. And, I, again, I appreciate everybody being on. I know this is kind of a unique situation. It's not our normal webinar, but I'm – you know, just maybe give me some, give me a shout out here. Let me know what you think of what we just showed you tonight. And can you see how you can use it in at least three ways? So go ahead and give me some feedback on that. Uh, let's see. Lyle said, you're going to turn this into a phone app in the future so we can log Oh, I think we already answered that one. Uh, yep, I think we're okay on questions. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I apologize for the audio. I'm not sure what's going on there. For the most part, I was able to hear everything. 
but every now and then I can hear some background noise. I think it's just the, it's it's just the internet. You know, I've you know normally, like I think my my voice is okay. At least it's coming up okay on my on my readout here. The audio seems to be fine. And car, everybody, yep. Car, everybody says I can see the possibility. So take make use of it, guys. It's yours to use. Um, you've earned it. And uh, and give me some feedback, okay? Okay, guys. Well, Paul, thanks again for doing this. Um, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to, to share with our our students here from all over, whether they're investors or agents in U.S. or Canada. I know they appreciate it. In fact, they're typing in now. Thank you very much for doing that. Um, let's see. Let's see. This is uh, Ronna says. Whenever the one of the issues is whenever Paul would type, it would it was super loud. Like he had had a mic on top of the keyboard, because we think the audio issue was on. You know what? I think I know what it, that was, Rhonda. That was um, he was using his computer's audio system, so the microphone is part of the the plat, part of the deck. You know, so as he was typing it right, you were picking up the keystrokes there. But all the other noise, I have no idea what that stuff was coming from. Um, everybody's saying, yeah, awesome networking tool. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. Um, I've already set up my profile. So a number of you have already set up your profiles. That's really good news. So, okay, right. guys, I'm going to log off here. Paul, any, any final thoughts before we turn off the recording? I just want to remind everybody that if you have any problems or you want to see other features that you would like to um, add into the system, I'll do the best that I can. And use the, um, use the forums and use the webmaster um, questionnaire. If you have any issues, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Okay. Well, thanks, Paul. And thanks, everybody, again. God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Remember, next week, there is no webinar next week. The next webinar will be the first week of July, and that will be Thursday night, July 7th, and I will be back in the Minneapolis-St. Paul area. So, okay, God bless everybody. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye.